Time now for news abuse. CNN's descent from news organization to political campaign is nearly complete. Last week, the channel published a story linking Trump ally Anthony Scaramucci to a Russia-controlled investment fund they said was being investigated by the Senate. And yet on Friday, CNN had to apologize to Scaramucci, which they did. They retracted the story completely and admitted it did not meet CNN's editorial standards. And that's saying something. Tonight, three reporters who worked on the piece resigned their jobs, at least one of them, a guy called Eric Lichtblau, who was at the New York Times, had worked on another CNN piece earlier this month about Trump. That piece also turned out to be false. You remember it, maybe, when CNN told us that Jim Comey, the former FBI director, was going to come before the Senate and contradict the president's claim that he was not under investigation. And Comey had told him so. That's what CNN told us. It turned out to be untrue and provably so. Lichtblau helped write that one, too. He may go back to the New York Times, where he came from in April. We'll see. It's been seven months, though, since Trump won the presidential election. Since then, precisely no evidence has emerged to support the claim that Trump somehow colluded with the Russian government in order to win the race. But you'd never know that from watching that channel, which has become home for conspiracists on the Russia question worldwide. Last February, to name yet another example, CNN produced a story accusing Trump associates of repeated contacts with Russian intelligence. That report turned out to be almost identical to a report by the New York Times that Jim Comey called out specifically for being grossly inaccurate. We could go on and on and on. Overall, 93% of CNN's coverage of the Trump administration has been negative. 93%. Idi Amin would get more balanced coverage. Anybody would. Fidel Castro certainly has. CNN, in other words, is no longer just a news organization. It is a campaign with a political mission run, not surprisingly, by a man named Jeff Zucker, who once expressed interest in running for office himself. Like any campaign, it is great at some things, pushing a message, hurting its opponents, and not so good at others, like reporting the news. This is a change. How did it happen? Cheryl Atkinson hosts Full Measure with Cheryl Atkinson and is the author of a very fitting and really interesting new book called The Smear. It comes out tomorrow, and she joins us tonight. Cheryl, CNN, I think, was liberal, you know, for a long time. But this is different from what we've seen before. And it's not just CNN, it's other news organizations. What changed? Well, I worked there a long time ago from, I think it was 1990 to 1993. But I think a lot of news organizations in the past three to four years have undergone a huge sea change, but especially in the past 18 months to two years of campaign 2016. And I talk about in the book, I think this is a confluence of factors, including we have now invited uh, pundits and political operatives into our newsroom, not just as commentators and pundits, but also as reporters, anchors, and editorial positions. So sometimes there's a little meaningful difference now, I think, between the people who are reporting the news and the political operatives who want to advance news narratives. That's yes. a problem. Um, I also think that the establishment, I'm talking Democrats, Republicans, and the media establishment, have um, exempted themselves from the normal journalism rules and rules of political behavior because they see Donald Trump as such a big threat. They would say huh. a Hitler-esque threat that means they don't have to follow the normal rules of journalism in this case. Um, I think it's more of a threat to the system of favors, money, and access that has been developed through what we've known as the political establishment. So it's not just a conventional left-right thing where they're liberal, Trump is conservative, they hate him. There's something different going on. Is well, it the populism I, of Trump that scares I, them? I think it's the fact that Washington survives, you know as well as I do, on a system that's gone on for decades of access and money where people have spent decades paying into certain politicians, Democrats and Republicans alike, to make sure certain political hearings don't happen, to make sure certain laws have, have provisions written in. All of a sudden, overnight, all of that access they've bought, all the hard work they've done as lobbyists and so on, is almost worthless if Trump's reality of Washington comes into play. And nobody seems to like that. So he's a threat to them personally, to I their jobs, so. I think so. to their way of doing things. So I wonder, what, what's the long-term cost? I mean, if you act like Trump is, you know, a despot, and you continue doing that, and he turns out not to be a despot, flawed in some ways, but he's not Mussolini, like, what happens to your credibility after a while? Talking about the news media? Or yeah, the news everybody? media. The news media, I think, is suffering a credibility gap in general because it has decided to blur together like I've never seen before um, opinion and advocacy journalism with what I think people would like to think is more straight news journalism reporting of just the facts. And 
I think that harm is going to take a long time to dial back if they even want to dial it back, and I'm not sure we do. What happens when there's a crisis, and there will be one, if there's a war or something awful happens and the whole country turns on its TV sets to find out just the facts of it, and we begin to realize that nobody believes the news anymore, what happens then? I kind of liken it in the extreme to, you know, the situation as it must be in North Korea. If you have a TV and can watch the news and it's going to be a version that's approved and put out by the state, um, I think in some respects we are getting an artificial reality created by people who are putting out narratives, whether Democrats, or Republicans, or corporate interests. And people sense, at least some people, that they're not getting an accurate picture. And I think if you're like me, there's very little that I see reported on the news that I instantly believe without doing my own I checking because so many formerly reputable news organizations have been proven to be 180 degrees wrong, not just a little bit wrong, but like in the case where so many insisted President Trump was under investigation when he wasn't, so many that insisted it couldn't be true that Comey had told him three times he wasn't under investigation when that was the case. These sorts of things with very little repercussions when the reporting turns out to be wrong based on, I think, highly inadequate standards, reporters doing things that wouldn't be allowed in journalism school, but doing them now with impunity. And you could go even farther back. Trump's going to lose their weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. I mean, time again, no one is ever held to account for lying, in effect. Or getting something woefully wrong because yes. they aren't doing due diligence. Exactly. Sherlock Atkinson, the book is great. Thank, Thank you, you for coming on. Thanks, Tucker. Several